Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Terrorist attacks in France. Will it lead to a ground war in Syria? Is NATO going to get involved against ISIS and the Islamic State? We interview William Murray with the Religious Freedom Coalition. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But today we have a celebrity guest interview, a Middle East expert who has repeatedly been to Iraq, to Syria, and has worked on the ground with refugees. I'm talking about my longtime friend, William Murray, with the Religious Freedom Coalition, talking via Skype today from Washington, D.C. Welcome, Mr. Murray, to the program. Great to be on with you, chaps. So, Bill, we have seen just amazing events this week in the news. Uh, talk for a moment about what happened in Paris, France, and what do you think will be the outcome? Well, as we view what happened in France, we have to remember that the estimate is that they have about 10,000 jihadist-leaning young men inside France. That this wasn't the first attack there. There was an attack earlier this year that was they tried to blame on a, a, a magazine and say, well, they were anti-Islamist, so it was okay. Uh, in reality, we forget about the Jewish deli that was attacked at the same time. We forget about the south of France and, and, and last year when, when uh, uh, a, a Jewish school was attacked and a, and a, and a girl, little girl was gunned down. Um, France is basically overrun. There are anywhere between 2,000 and 6,000 French citizens fighting in Syria right now for jihadists. And they can come back anytime they want to. So this event in Paris was not an isolated uh, event by any means. France has a problem. Europe has a problem. And to try to equate this with uh, traditional family values uh, and in, in with uh, the, the whole concept that we deal with here uh, with abortion and, and many of the other social issues, here is the core issue. Uh, Europe has been importing hundreds of thousands of Muslims because the women of Europe don't want to have children. They want to play, they want to have fun, they want to go on long vacations, they want to have money, they want to have cars, they want to have nice apartments. They're secularly motivated. The church is almost dead in Europe. Um, less than five or six percent of the population, uh, uh, even though many say they're Christians, less than uh, four or five percent in many of these countries uh, uh, go to go to church. Uh, they don't believe that the propagation of the, of the species is, is the most important thing uh, that they're here for. They think that the most important thing they're here for are the secular reasons to have fun. That's what they believe they're on earth for. So hang on a second. Spend money and to have fun. So they're importing these hundreds of thousands of, 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 of Muslims in in order to work because they simply don't have children. So when these terrorist attackers, I think seven terrorists, went on a killing spree, 127 people were shot dead, over 100 in a theater, uh, a concert, and six other, or th three other locations, I guess they were in teams of two, you're saying they're not just seven terrorists, this is not an isolated incident, but these people told the crowd before they began shooting, we are with the Islamic State. We came from Syria. France has you know, done some attacking in Syria, so this was their revenge tour. It's not just those seven people. You're saying there are 10,000 jihadists in France? It, at least 10,000 jihadists is, 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 the, is the estimate that they have there. These are not only the 2,000 or so that have come back from, from Syria that were French citizens that are well-trained and military trained, but another 8,000. Remember the one, the, the, those that were involved in the earlier attack this year in Paris were not uh, uh, Syrian trained. The ones that were in, in, that attacked the Jewish school uh, last year, those were not uh, uh, trained in Syria. 
So France is, uh, uh, has a tremendous Muslim population, and if even if even if only one or two percent leaned in this direction, you'd have well over ten thousand. Uh, so uh, this is a is a major problem, and it's a major problem uh, uh, for Europe. Remember that the entire attack, the nine eleven attack, was was planned in Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, it wasn't planned in New York City. It wasn't planned in the mountains of Afghanistan. It was planned, and 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 the details were put together, and the financing came out of, of Frankfurt, Germany. Europe has a, a a major problem. There was a German uh, intelligence officer who was on television today on one of the talk shows, and he said that it takes sixty security personnel. Uh, the time of 60 security personnel for one person to be uh, uh, on the, the terrorist watch list who is constantly observed, where his connections are observed, all of his electronic uh, communications are checked out, what people he sees, what he does, where he goes, 60 for one. That means for 10, 10 potential terrorists, you need 600. For 100 potential terrorists, you, you, you need um, uh, 6,000. Uh, th these are enormous numbers, and there's some estimates are that anywhere from two to ten percent of the of the million refugees that are coming in this year into Europe, quote unquote, refugees have ISIS leanings. Most of these refugees out of Syria and uh, uh, Iraq are Sunni. These are the ones that want to overthrow the secular government. These these aren't they're they're not they're not we're not getting the Christians. We're getting Sunni refugees, and this is a major problem. And these Sunnis aren't going to Sunni Saudi Arabia. Those those Sunnis are coming into into um, uh, 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 Europe, and they were fighting against the secular government. I don't think that they're coming to Europe because they want to be secularists. No, I think you're right. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to ask Bill Murray: Is there a solution? What should France do to sort the jihadists from? moderate or peaceful Muslims. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Let's take a stand with Israel today. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. And sign a petition to defend Israel, who is America's closest ally, certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. We remember watching Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu give that speech at the UN when he warned about the making of an Islamic nuclear bomb, and that is being forged in Iran. But what are we doing now? The USA is negotiating with the Europeans to allow Iran to continue to develop nuclear material. Well, that's not right. Do we really trust this man, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, who is the former nuclear weapons chief? You don't think they're gonna build a nuclear bomb when his predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, literally threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Now, we need to take a stand. Why is American foreign policy to fund the Muslim Brotherhood? Let's sign a petition to stop that. Stop sending our taxpayer dollars to fund the Muslim Brotherhood. And let's also sign a petition to protect the Jewish homeland. Both of those are available today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And when you sign those petitions, we will fax them to Congress. Instead, the failed foreign policy of the Obama administration, starting with Hillary Clinton and now John Kerry, is pressuring Israel to give up Jerusalem? Why? We should never divide the eternal capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem, and we should move the American embassy there. But instead, now the Obama administration is unfreezing the Iranian bank accounts, sending $7 billion to them on the hope of empty promises that maybe they'll stop their nuclear program. Let's defend Israel. The Jewish people are our friends. They have a right to security in their homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign that petition right now. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. I'm joined again from Washington DC via Skype with William J. Murray. Bill Murray is the president of the Religious Freedom Coalition. And honestly, he's one of the leading experts in Middle East politics. Welcome back to the program, Bill. Great to be on with you as always. So Bill, you have been to Iraq. You have been 
among the refugees. You've been to Syria and you were one of the leading voices two years ago when we first started to forward your reports to everybody. It proved now that you were a prophet, that you, were for, you had foresight that nobody else foresaw when it came to ISIS, this Islamic State, and now the refugee problem. How do we sort? And here in America, we're having this policy discussion among the presidential debates. Refugees coming to America, not just to France, but 10,000 refugees coming to America from Syria, some of them might be Christian, or some of them might be Islamic terrorists. How do we sort that out? Well, I don't know that there'll be any Christians. Uh, President Obama, are you ready for this number, chaps? President Obama has allowed in exactly 53 Christians from Syria in the last five years. During that same period of time, he has brought tens of thousands of Muslims into the, into the United States. 27 Chaldean Christians came into the United States illegally across Mexico, the border. They had relatives inside of the United States. Now, typically, if you're from El Salvador, if you're from Honduras, if you're from Brazil, if you're from anywhere and you cross into the United States illegally across the southern border, other than Mexico, you are you are arrested, held for a couple days, and giving a hearing date if you apply for asylum, and you're left loose. Those 27 Chaldean Christians were arrested and detained uh, for, for over six months until every one of them were deported. Every one of those Chaldean Christians, and th th this is the reason, the Obama administration said, oh, Christians aren't persecuted in Iraq, so they can just go back to Iraq. Australia, Germany, and France took those Christians, is what, or Austria, Austria, Austria excuse me, and, and Australia and Germany took, took, took those Christians that, that Obama deported. We don't want any of the Christians here for a variety of reasons. Number one, they are they're well, very well educated and they speak English for the most part, and they have relatives here. We want poor Muslims who, who will clean airplanes and, and, and load, load cargo uh, is, is, is what we're, we're, we're looking for, preferably that don't speak English. You're saying so, that's, the, that's President Obama's policy. That's not, you're saying that tongue in cheek. Well, I, 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 I believe that that is the result that we get out of his policy is, right. is you know, we have a uh, there there are a number of Somali men. He has imported uh, uh, thousands and th well, tens of thousands of Somalis that he has moved up into Minnesota in order to diversify Minnesota. And uh, many of those are have of the young men have gone, uh, particularly the offspring have have wound up going back to Somalia. There are dozens of young Somalian men missing, dozens of young uh, men uh, in the Minnesota area missing that have gone back to do jihad. We have had uh, uh, American uh, Muslims who have died in suicide attacks against the Assad government in in Syria. So this is no joking mere, uh, matter, but there is a bias by the Obama administration against Christians coming to the United States. The United the State Department is about to release a report saying yes, there is genocide by the Islamic State, and they're going to they're going to name minorities, including the Yazidis. Christians are not going to be listed, despite the fact of the of the tens of thousands of Christians have been murdered, their homes have been taken, the, the women who have been uh, uh, married, women who have been kidnapped and forced into Muda, these temporary marriages, the 10, 20 marriages a night with the fighters, and, and their young daughters have been taken, their, their boys have been taken and crucified, but they're not a persecuted minority as far as Obama is concerned, but the, but the Yazidis are. This is typical of what we're getting from the Obama ad administration. Um, I think now, however, he is in a position where he's going to actually be forced to, to do something about the Islamic State. The president of France has declared this an act of war against him by a foreign body. And France is a member of NATO, and any, Na any NATO nation that is attacked, the other NATO nations have to, have to respond. So if France wants to send ground troops there, we're going to be forced to send ground troops whether we want to or not. So Article 5 of the NATO treaty, I mean, this is a historic treaty that was signed, I think at the end of World War II, that all of the European nations and America 
will come to each other's defense. Are we legally bound? Or is there some constitutional argument that Obama can make? No, no, we're not gonna send ground troops because he's politically opposed to that. Or are, because we signed this treaty, do we have to join them? We're, we're legally bound. We're legally bound to, to assist France in defending itself. And France has declared this an act of war. And now Obama in Vienna has agreed that it was an act of war. So he is kind of trapped by this. He is going to have to, to, to do something regardless of, of uh, the agreement of the American people. What he does and whether it, it is, um, uh, you know, it, 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 this is a very difficult situation because remember that the United States is acting in Syria as the Saudi agent to overthrow a Shiite government and replace it with a Sunni government. Th this is what this whole thing is about. Uh, this was a, a the the rev the revolt in 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 Syria was never there were never any secularists uh, revolting against uh, Assad. This was a Sunni led uprising. There were two billion dollars of weapons that were brought in there in advance by the Saudis. The original uh, FSA Free Syrian Army was all Sunni. It was financed by the Saudi government. The officers, these are mercenaries. The fighters were paid three hundred dollars a month. The officers four to five hundred dollars a month. Uh, Damascus volcano, which was was uh, uh, backed by the Saudi government and 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 our intelligence services, which was such a horrible failure. Uh, and uh, it, it was a kind of a Bay of Pigs fiasco in trying to invade uh, uh, Damascus uh, four years ago because the, everybody was said, oh, everybody hates Assad, everybody hates the secular government, they're all going to rise up. And this is why it was so similar to the Bay of Pigs. This, this uh, 10,000 man uh, uh, almost uh, 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 Saudi uh, uh, financed um, uh, a mercenary army. They tried to take Damascus from the south from solid bases and the people were supposed to rise up. The people did rise up. They rose up and they fought them. And uh, the, the, a part of them have been trapped there for the last four years. So hold so, on a second, Bill. I, I heard you say something key and I want to zero in on this. We've all studied you know, Middle East history, we understand there's the Sunni Shiite divide between Saudi Arabia, who is an ally of the American, uh, historically American ally, but they're led by a Sunni government. They wanna establish a religious presence throughout Syria, throughout Iraq, versus the Shiite government, which is really supported by Iran, and really Iran is in league with the Syrian dictator, is, is it secularist, but the Assad regime is, sort of allied with the Shiites, or maybe not specifically, but at least they have promoted more religious freedom for minority faiths. If Obama is supporting the uprising of a Sunni-led regime, are they also, have they been supporting ISIS, the Islamic State? At, at one point we were supporting ISIS. This is the interesting part. We thought Al Qaeda was the bad guy. So there was a point where we were assisting and arming what was going to become Al Qaeda because we thought that they were going to be the counterbalance to, to Al Qaeda and Al Nusra. It turned out that they were far worse. But there is a more sinister thing here. Uh, first of all, about this Shiite and Sunni divide, I think that is correct in, in, in a big overall thing, but. Uh, the reality is the Iraqi government and the Syrian government, and at one point the Egyptian government, uh, were Baathist. They were Baath parties. The, 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 this was a, a secular party, a socialist-leaning party, maybe even national, a national socialist party, that was founded by a, 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 a Christian. And uh, it was an extremely secular party. This is why in Iraq, uh, the vice president was, uh, was a Christian under Saddam Hussein. This is why the, the head of the army in, in Syria under Assad was a, a Christian until he was assassinated uh, 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 two, two years ago. It's why the Christians had uh, an enormous amount of autonomy and freedom in, in Iraq and in Syria and in Egypt because of that Ba'ath party and that secular, uh, that secular uh, presence. We have gone in and decided, look, the best way to do this is to have some kind of a, I, I don't know what, but the idea that, that Saudi Arabia, a, a, a Sunni, one of, the, one of the most despotic 
governments in the world, Saudi Arabia. It, it, it's a close. It's real close to see which one's more despotic, North Korea or Saudi Arabia. That that that's a close call as to which one is the most despotic. Wow. I mean, last week they crucified a teenager publicly for disagreeing with the king. Amazing. Uh, well, uh, and, hang on and, a second. Bill, we got to take one more commercial break, but when we come back, I'm going to ask you, what is the solution in Europe? I know there may be boots on the ground in Syria, but how do we cleanse the jihadists from the moderate Muslims in Europe right after this? Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit? or from angels, or from invisible demons. I'm Dr. Chaps, and you've seen us on this show talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. Maybe you know that I wrote my PhD dissertation entitled, How to See the Holy Spirit and Angels and Demons. And it's all about this important topic of receiving the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you discern the thoughts that come to you? How do you know to learn to hear the voice of God and discern that from the demonic voice which tempts us to sin. Well, this is an important skill and it will change your ministry. It'll change your life, which is why we've created now, not just a book, but a 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that we would like to send to you and your church and your family and your small group. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? When you learn to discern, it will transform your life and your ministry. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and get this important video resource. Or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God, and for a suggested donation of $99, we'll give you the entire 17-part Bible study series for just $99. And if you order today, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us toll free at 866 Obey God. Get this important Bible study series for your family. Call today. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. We have just about four minutes left, but Bill Murray, I wanna get your take on, you've been to Iraq. You've seen the Christian refugees being cleansed by the Muslim extremists. You've been to Saudi Arabia, I presume, and Syria. You predicted all this long before, but is there a solution in Europe? How does, and we've seen protesters now, the French are saying, drive out the Muslims. Well, we don't wanna create a genocide. We're, we're against ethnic cleansing, but you've somehow got to cleanse the real jihadists. How do you sort the wheat from the chaff? Well, to, to clarify, I have also been to Lebanon and, uh, and I leave for Lebanon in, in uh, actually in just a couple of weeks and I go on into uh, uh, Jordan and Iraq for our Christmas for Refugee program, which we deliver um, uh, uh, Christmas programs, including a hot meal and food for the families of, uh, of Christian refugees. And I could go on for another half hour just talking about the horrible conditions that I have witnessed in uh, the basements of buildings in Jordan, in Amman, Jordan, where it gets freezing cold, and up in the Baqa Valley, where where children have fro Christian children have frozen to death overnight, and 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 in Erbil, where where our ministry is, uh, the the situation is is horrifying, and the fact that many of these nations will take Muslims but will not take uh, 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 Christians is 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 interest is is beyond interesting. It it is uh, uh, an amazing ignorance, uh, an amazing political correctness. They have a big problem. In, in Germany. Part of the reason is that they allow the hate speech, and France does too, they, and, and England, they allow the hate speech from the, from the imams, from the, from the preachers, but they don't allow anybody to say anything about it. Right now, there are, they have opened investigations in Germany against more than four, 50 German citizens uh, for publicly saying that, that uh, 
that jihadists and and uh, the Muslim community should be invest- investigated and 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 people need to be cleansed out of there that are leaning in 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 the direction that you're talking about. At the same time, an imam can get up on Friday in Germany and say that Jews are descendants of pigs and apes, and that and that um, you know that all of uh, the the apostates uh, have to have to be destroyed, and that democracy is a uh, um, uh, is an apostate form of government that's anti-Islam, and that's all over. Okay, uh, that that is the big problem. The, the truth can't be said over there. And, and overall, we have to keep in mind that most of these European nations, including Germany, including France, and free, including the UK, there is no freedom of speech for most people, for the citizens. There is no freedom of assembly. There is no freedom of, of, of religion. There is no freedom of the press. Um, that uh, they have democratically elected governments, but the people aren't allowed to speak freely about their feelings. Uh, uh, you know, if you go to post a, a web on a, on a web page in Europe, there are warnings there. Uh, be careful what you post because your IP address will be made available to the authorities, and they might come and get you. Um, this is a, a, a these are some real issues and some 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 real problems. So how do you deal with it? I don't know how you deal with it when you're not allowed to tell the truth. I don't know how you deal with it when when you're not able to um, uh, um, uh, to to have a, a, a people inside of the mosques listening to the sermons. I don't know how you're going to deal with it if you're not willing or able to shut down the imams that are that are calling for the violence and that are working toward uh, 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 toward establishing caliphates in, in Europe. Bill, we want to mention your website again, religiousfreedomcoalition.org. We're asking all of our viewers, please go there and donate to this Christmas charity program at religiousfreedomcoalition.org. Bill is actually going to the Middle East with your money to help real Christians, real refugees, and I trust this man, I've known him for years. I'm gonna take a moment and pray for you, Bill. Father, we ask your anointing and your, and your safety and for this trip that's upcoming. God, give him inroads of access to the real people on the ground that really need your help and bless him with a fruitful ministry to the poor in Jesus' name, amen. Our guest has been Bill Murray, religiousfreedomcoalition.org or you can call us at 866-Obey-God. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.